Hi, welcome to Charisma's Corner. I'm Charisma and I just want to, to give you a tutorial on my wool penny and confetti projects. I've posted a few over the last couple of years and they, everybody seems to have questions about them so I just wanted to kind of go through those with you. So this is my first one and I really made it, um, sorry, I really made it to get a hang of these stitches because I was a new embroiderer and I had only learned a few basic stitches and this was just a great way uh, to practice those stitches. Each little wool penny is only, you know, one and a half inches. Uh, so you're not making much of a commitment when you start something, uh, but it's enough practice to give you the hang of it. So a wool penny is just a wool circle. That's just what they call it. Wool confetti is a wool square. These are two different wool confetti projects. Um, so the other thing that I want to address when you first get started, whether you're doing a penny project or a confetti project, it doesn't matter, the process is the same. Um, you want to really think about your background fabric. You just need a fat quarter for these small projects or a scrap uh, about that size. And I've used burlap, I've used linen, shot cotton. This is an, uh, an embossed batik. You can't really tell in the photo that it's embossed, but I just kind of wanted to try it out. So any fabric will do. Most of these are hanging on the wall. They're not going to get a lot of wash, but all of those fabrics quilt up very nice when you're finished. Um, so I have a piece of fabric here. I just used a scrap um, about fat quarter size. And how I start that is I just make a grid on the fabric and I use my friction pen. So the friction pen is really nice. I don't know, um, usually if you're uh, doing embroidery, a lot of us know what they are. They iron off. They were, you know, originally used for Sudoku, but um, us embroiderers have, picked, embroiderers have picked that up. So I just make a grid on the fabric using my straight edge. And you can see that I've done that here. And I just do two inches. All of the wool pennies and the squares fit within that two inch grid. I do leave um, space on the sides um, because we just do that in embroidery and applique or anything like that so that you can trim it off later. So I have that and then what you're going to do is I buy my wool confetti and my um, wool pennies already pre-cut. You can cut them yourself but they're pretty inexpensive. They're from In The Patch Designs. I buy them from my local quilt shop. I, I'll post links to all of this um, when we, uh, when I post this online for you. Um, so we're going to do some wool confetti right now. The other thing that I want to mention, if you look at any of my projects, is you know even if I'm doing wool confetti, I'll almost always put some sort of eye, um, something to throw off the eye. So I always put like a circle. There's a circle there, even in my other one I might put a square I might do something just to th to give your some your eyes something to focus on so then all you do is you take your squares and you just put them in your grid so don't focus on um, the colors too much I mean you know you don't want to have three pink ones in a row or something like that um, if green isn't your favorite color then um, don't worry about how many greens you have because in the end, all of the stitching that you do is going to completely take over the background squares and you don't have to worry about that. There's actually a lot of variety of colors in these things. And um, I actually just purchased some of these flowers that I thought were really cute and they have like little shapes and that sort of thing in um, these little designs. So. Anyway, that's what you do. After you find an arrangement that you like, I use my Roxanne's Glue It Base It glue. And all you do is you just um, put a few drops on each thing, glue it into place, then let it set. Don't, um, you want to let it dry. And you can stitch through that. It's just fine. It's actually washable and everything. And so when you're done with the arrangement and you've glued it into place, you'll end up with a project like this. So I did this before everything is dry. I could actually rip this off if I wanted to. I don't want to do that obviously, but it's stable enough to stay in place so that I can stitch it. So then when you're done with this part of the process, then you go through and 
you find matching threads, usually a thin thread, um, and you stitch down all of the edges of those um, confetti squares or circles. So you see I still have my grid on here because I um, like to keep those guidelines in case I want to go out with my embroidery. You can I can stay within those lines and not encroach on any of the other wool pennies. I don't tend to embroider in a line. I kind of jump around the whole thing when I'm embroidering. So I like to do that. Uh, so then I, so the other thing I just want to kind of focus on is the different threads. I use, I tend to use basically just DMC floss and pearl cottons. I do have some silks and some other things that I can use if I want, but I tend to focus on DMC because I can control the um, width of the, the weight of the thread basically. So um, if I'm going to do a bullion knot, six strands of, of uh, DMC floss make a very chunky uh, stitch and a pearl cotton makes a lighter stitch. So you can see here that this is a bullion stitch using pearl cotton and I just kind of have this dainty little bullion feather that goes around this petal. And here I used six strands of a variegated DMC floss and did the same exact knot. But you can see that the petals come out a little bit more. They're chunkier. So it just depends. This is what this sampler is great for. It's great for um, just having a sampler of the different stitches that you learn and it, the different weights, the kinds of threads that you want to use. And um, what I do with the stitches is I just buy any embroidery book, anything with stitches. I don't tend to learn from diagrams very well. I like to learn from a video. So I look up the name of the stitch, go to YouTube, punch in the name of the stitch, and then there's several that pop up and I just watch the video a few times and then I apply it to my wool pennies or my wool squares. Uh, the other side note that I would just like to say for me personally, the pennies seem to be a little bit easier to work on because you don't have any square edges. That's just me personally. So if you're going to start one of these, I would start with pennies. And uh, then when I'm done with all the embroidery stitches is then when I iron it, quilt it, well, put my borders on if I want to border quilt it, and go on from there. So I just want to say thank you for joining me today at Charisma's Corner. And if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to email or ask. I don't mind helping at all, and I would love to see your projects. Thanks for stopping by.